Do you have any problem with the idea that the divine glory Amen. was veiled in flesh? Amen. Yes. Yes. So the divine glory can be veiled in created light, but the divine glory can't be veiled in flesh. Allah is the blah of the heavens and the earth. And the parable of his blah is as if there were a blah. Because if these words don't mean anything that you can think of, then quite literally, the Quran has said absolutely nothing. Do I look calm? Hey, look up. Right, now Susie, when I'm, I, when I'm not mowed, then ask me. Like, Why are you angry? angry? Oh, you're I'm angry, angry, yeah, I'm you're angry. angry you're blaspheming my God. You're an angry one. You're crap about the hammies. Oh, what did I say? 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 What did I this time today. Why you lost anyway? No, no, no. La ilaha illallah. Why 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 you nervous? La ilaha illallah. That was me like pretending to be okay, 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 let it go. Let it go. Oh, let it go. I'd like to hold on to it for a little while. I just found the jugular. You're too worked up. Just let it go. Just let it go. Listen. Are you lost, man? So so let me ask you guys. Let me let me ask you guys. K, K, no, let go. Bob, don't, don't start refuting me because I'll start. You need Jesus. Well, I still get more so, than your bedroom. <laughs> they're just winding you up. They're just going in you. No, they're not. No, I'm already wound up. You need up. Jesus. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to step in. Charles? Let him be by himself. So, oh, okay. so let's, let, I want to I ask a question. <laughs> yeah? Is, is Allah comparable to anything he's created? No. No. Does everyone agree with this 16 year old? Yeah. Yeah. Do you agree? Do you agree? Do you agree? Do you guys agree that, that Allah is not comparable to anything that he's created? Great. So, answer this question. Answer this question. Here's a description of Allah in the Quran. The reference is Surah 24, Ayah 35. Yeah, pull it up in your own Qurans. Read it with me. You could be lying, Bob. Yeah. Surah 24, 35. You could be lying, a fat check. It says, it says. It's all right. He's it's, it's got it. Yeah, listen. Surah 24, 35. So we all heard the Muslims say at the start of the conversation, Allah is not comparable to anything he has created. Listen. Alright, 34. Ah, one second, excuse. Uh, bro, bro, bro. Let's do this like sensible people. Yeah? It, uh, uh, this is my presentation. I'm going to invite you to respond. It says in the Quran, Allah is the light. Now, ask yourself this question. Is, is light created or not created? Created. Created. Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. The parable of is light, which is a created thing, is, is is as if there were a niche. Well, niches are created. And within it, a lamp. Lamps are created. The lamp, which is created, enclosed in glass. Well, glass is created. The glass, as it were, a brilliant star. Well, stars are created. Lit from a blessed tree. Well, trees are created and olive well olives are created neither of the east nor of the west whose oil well oil is created is well nigh luminous though fire scarce touch it fire is created light which is created upon light which is created Allah doth guide whom he will to his light Allah doth set forth parables for men, and Allah do know all things. So when I asked at the beginning, is Allah comparable to anything in his creation, what was the unanimous answer? No. What did the Quran just do? Compare it to other things. So do you want to explain? Alright, so which verse is this? Surah 35. 35. Okay. 
Allah is the light of heavens with us. Okay, so uh, when he refers to us light, it will not be of this world. We cannot imagine what that light will look like until we get to the day of judgment or when we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, it's not of this world. So firstly, let me finish. Go on. Uh, let me read the verse. Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. The example is this light, which is a niche, which uh, there are lamps. The lamp is within glass, as glass was empty as the star. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, it is. It will not be of this world. Did it say of this world? It did not say of this world. We don't know what he, he looks like. We can't compare him. That's blasphemy. Right. So you all heard the young man's response. Not from this world. Yeah. It that it was that anything that it says about Allah, the light, the stars, the glass, the, the niche, the oil. Well, none of those things can be anything that you imagine. So, the brother just replaces one problem with another problem. What is that? The first problem was, they believe that Allah can't be compared to anything in his creation. But as we've just seen, Allah make five, made five comparisons to created things to himself. And his reply was, well, they're not like you imagined them. So when I say the word light, what you imagine is not what you can say about Allah. Exactly. That's right, one I'm second, saying. one second, one second. He's no, okay, okay, okay. Bro, guys, guys, you're, 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 you're jumping around. Listen to me, because you're, you've just made your problem worse. Oh. Because if we say, if we say, that light doesn't mean anything that you can think of as light and glass doesn't mean anything that you can think of as glass and stars doesn't mean anything that you can think of as stars okay. then what has actually been communicated? Let me read it, let me read it in the way that we are now understanding from this commentary. One second. Allah is the blah of the heavens and the earth and the parable of his blah is as if there were a blah and within it, a blah. The blah enclosed in blah. The blah, as it were, a brilliant blah, lit from a blah. A blah, neither of the east nor of the west. Because if these words, because if these words don't mean anything that you can think of or imagine, then quite literally, the Quran has said absolutely nothing. It is communicated nothing to you. And therefore, how can it be from Allah? How would you reply to that? Right, so there was one, have you heard of the story, the last man to leave, uh, uh, the last man to enter heaven or to leave hellfire, whatever. Go on, so tell us the story. Basically, he, he was burning in the hell and he told Allah Azza wa Jal, please let me out. And Allah said, if I let you out, do you, do you prom uh, promise not to ask me anything again? And he said, yes, I'm paraphrasing a little bit because I don't know the, the word for word. So what happened was he put him in, I think it was an island or whatever, behind the, I think it was behind the tree. And he was, uh, and then there was another tree. He said, oh Allah, can I please st uh, stand underneath that tree? And then he said, uh, and then Allah said, okay, but you sh uh, shouldn't ask me for anything more from now on. And then he said, okay. And then when he asked him for Jannah, paradise, Allah laughed. But it wasn't a laugh that we all know. It, uh, he has his own unique laugh that he invented because it is not from this earth. So that's what I'm saying. That he, uh, he created everything. So obviously he could create his own form of light that we, uh, uh, that we as humans can, uh, can't imagine or see. Right, so let, let's be clear about this. What the brother is arguing, which is a very traditional argument in Muslim circles, well, is that it. nothing that you can think of or imagine is equivalent to Allah. And that's an argument you're gonna hear all around this park. He's made it very clear here. But unfortunately, that only confirms what I'm saying. Sahih al Muslim, wait, wait, wait. Al Iman. Exactly. Listen, or oh, you'll miss it again. You'll miss it again. Wait, 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 wait. You'll, how is it different? How is it different? A human being yes. and a veil. Yes. Another human being that came to this earth. Go on. Shit. Yes. Ate. Yes. Slept. Yes. Was a baby. God. Yes. Is, the, is what God is inside. The flesh, yes. You're saying it's yes. inside there. Yes. That's very different to a barrier. Right. That fence Let's, is a barrier. Whoever's behind there, if I put up a big fence, they can't see me. Great, let me reply to that. Thing, it's a barrier. Like that. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You take God and you put him inside a vase. Yes. Which is what you're saying. Okay. Two different things. So let me reply. The same he argues that they are two different things. Yeah. 
Let me ask you this question. The Muslims admitted that the veil is created. And the Hadith state that the creation holds back the glory of God. That's what the Hadith state. So a created thing holds back the glory of God. That is identical to what we say about the flesh of Christ holding back the glory of the divinity of Christ. There's no difference at all. They're both created. They both hold back the glory of God by the will of God. They have it in their own sources. So I tell you why it's different, yeah? Go on. There's one God up there above yep. the seventh heaven. Yep. You're telling me that same God split himself into two. Actually, no, you don't believe that. You believe there was always three to begin with. Am I wrong? You're right on the last statement, yes. So you always believe there was always three to begin with, not one. Always Father, Son and Holy Spirit. There was always three. Yes, that's what we believe. So at one point, Amen. One of them, one of them, one of them, Amen, was created again. No. So what happened? You just said he was created. Because you weren't listening. Okay. So what I have said, and it's a shame that this Muslim brother just does not listen. But it's not unsurprising, because sadly that is too much of the Dawa team here in the park. They have their script. And if you say anything outside of their script, they just repeat their script without understanding what's being said. I said, and I say it again, that the flesh of Christ was created. Like the veil in these hadiths was created. So, the veil created by Allah restricts the glory of Allah. Something created restricts Allah's glory and we believe the same about the flesh of Christ. Can I just ask, Amen. who created Amen. the flesh? Yes. Jesus, the Holy Spirit or the Father? Yeah. The three. So all three of them created one flesh. They don't do different operations, it's all the same. They, do, they don't do different operations. They do the same. What about when Jesus was on earth with no glory? Yeah, what happened? Veiled glory. No, no, what happened then? Veiled glory. Okay. So, what veiled happened, glory. Wait, wait, wait. thank you. What happened with Jesus now, have you got a problem with veiled glory? What happened when Jesus was in there? I'm asking you, do you have a problem with Christ having his glory veiled? No offense. Yeah. No, no, no offense. Yeah. I'm asking you. Okay, no offense. Yeah. What you're talking about is just something that you want to argue. That's not my problem with Christianity at all. So you have no problem with the idea of the veiled glory of Christ? Again, me, I believe in truth. Yeah. Answer my question. Let me finish, bro. You have to let me speak. Are yeah. you telling me your God died? I believe in let him finish, bro. Let him speak. I believe. Yes, bro. I Go on, big man. I believe in truth. So whatever you give me from the Bible, yeah, I'm going to disregard Amen. it. Amen. Amen. Okay? Amen. That's where I come from. We're just having a conversation of your beliefs. But you still haven't answered my question. Which is what? See? <laughs> Go on. Let's try this again. My question to you is a simple one. Mm. Do you have any problem with the idea that the divine glory was Amen. veiled in flesh? Amen. Yes. Yes. Did you all hear that? Yes. So the divine glory can be veiled in created light, but the divine glory can't be veiled in flesh. And that is the hypocrisy and contradiction of Islamic argument. Now explain to me why they're different. Okay. Again, I will explain it. A fence is a veil. A hijab is a veil. Oh. A curtain, oh. also a veil. You're getting violated. The light, also oh, a veil. David. You can't see it onto the other side. Oh, that is very David. different to that suitcase which you pack something into. A human is self-contained. Do you know what I mean by that? Come on, come on, David. You just right, so allow me to reply. Ah, okay. Bob, Bob. The analogy ah, that he David. uses. This is about what you It is. Unfortunately, you don't understand the English you're using. You just got violated. Think about it, ladies and gentlemen. What is the point of a veil? It is to obscure you from someone's vision. We are saying that the flesh operates like this. Whether you veil someone behind a curtain or whether you veil them by sticking them in a big box, the operation is the same. Amen. Now, furthermore, furthermore, no, one second. Before you move on, one second. One second. No, let me finish. Let me finish. It, what it says in Sunan Ibn Majah is that his veil is light 
And if he were to remove the veil, the glory of his face would burn everything in his creation. So that means that the veil obscures the glory of the face of Allah to the length of his vision. So what we have is the idea of the curtailment of Allah's attributes. That's what you have, the curtailment of Allah's attributes. But when we say as Christians, God's attributes are curtailed by the flesh of Christ, they say that's a problem. So they have it in their book, but they condemn it in ours. Go on. Again, two different things. The veil is purely visual. The prophet could not see God. Visually, it has nothing to do with his power, his majesty, what power he has control over, none of that. Different to Jesus. You are saying his veil completely has no power now. That's the concept that Christianity keeps giving us. That when he was flesh, he had zero power, zero majesty. He turned himself into a complete human who ate shit, had to do all of that. That's what you're saying. It's different to someone that you just can't see. That's two different things. Don't conflict the two. So, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who are following the argument, rather than the school ground antics that are happening over here, I would encourage you to focus on an intelligent argument rather than this schoolboy who is trying to intimidate a woman. A schoolboy is trying to intimidate a woman because he is a chav, because his prophet was a chav. So, come back. Come back to the intelligent argument we're having here and raise your understanding. So, the brother said that the flesh of God in Christ limited the power and the glory and the majesty of God. And we agree it does. But the Hadith say exactly the same. Focus on the intelligent conversation. This is what the Hadith says. Sunan Ibn Majah, number 195, Book of Sunnah. The grade of this Hadith is a Sahih Hadith. Everyone say Sahih. Sahi means reliable. His veil is light. And if he were, listen, if he were to remove it, the glory of his face would burn everything of his creation. So the veil of Allah is preventing the glory of Allah from burning creation. That is exactly the same as what we believe about the flesh of Christ. So the Muslims have a contradiction in the argument that they make against Christianity and the things that they believe themselves. And this Muslim agrees with me. But the issue is, this is the Hadith-based Muslims. So I think the Christians and the Hadith-based Muslims are both wrong, right? So if we go to Second Chronicles chapter 22, verse 2, 40 and 2 years old was Ahaziah when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem for one year. His mother was Athaliah, daughter of the king of Omri. But if you go to Second Kings chapter 8, verse 26, 20 and 2 years old was Ahaziah when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem for one year. His mother was Athaliah, daughter of the king of Omri. So it doesn't make sense either. So let me reply.